This lesson involves evaluating limits analytically. Prior to this, you saw that you could evaluate limits or finite y values from a graph or from a table. Now we're going to look at if you're given a function, can you figure out is there a y value that this function approaches as x approaches a certain value from the left and the right. The method that we use to do this is called direct substitution. With direct substitution, we're going to take this value and just substitute it into our function and figure out if the function is defined at that point. Okay, so some really easy examples to start with. The limit is x approaches 2 of 3. Well, here there is no x to plug into, so we are just going to get 3. Well, let's think about what this is on a graph. 3 would be the function y equals 3. That's just a horizontal line. So as I approach 2 from the left and the right, of course I'm going to get 3 as my y value. For problem B, we're going to direct substitute negative 4 in for our x, and we just get negative 4 as the answer. Let's try another problem. Here we're going to take 2 and substitute it into our x, and we will get 2 squared equals 4. For problem d, we're also going to substitute 2 in for our x, and we will get 4 times 2 squared plus 3 is 16 plus 3 equals 19. Now I want to make a note here about limit notation. Limit notation is a command telling you to do the direct substitution. Just like a plus symbol is a command telling you to add or a multiplication symbol is a command telling you to multiply things together. It is telling me to take this 2 and plug it in. Once I have performed this action, I no longer need limit notation in front of my problem. So here, I still see x's in the problem, so I need the limit notation telling me to substitute in. Here, I no longer have x's, I no longer need the limit notation. The same is true over here. There are x's in the problem. I still need the command telling me to substitute in an x value. Once I have plugged in the x value, I no longer have limit notation in front of the problem. Let's try another problem. Here we're going to substitute a 1 in for our x's, so I get 1 squared plus 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 1, well that is 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4 over 2 results in a limit of 2. Let's try problem F. If we substitute a 0 in here, we're going to get 0 plus 9, or the square root of 9, is 3. Problem G, we're going to substitute a 3 in for our x. So I get the cube root of 2 times 3 squared minus 10, which is the cube root of 18 minus 10, or the cube root of 8, which is 2. Problem H, we're going to substitute the 0 in to tangent 
So we get tangent of zero. Well, remember tangent is sine over cosine. And at zero, sine is equal to zero, cosine is equal to one, so we just get zero. Okay, in problem I, we're gonna plug in the pi over four. And remember, sine squared x is the same thing as sine of x all squared. Sine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. And if we square this, we'll get two over four or one half. For problem J, we plug in a negative one here. We just get negative one times e to the negative one. And that's not very pretty to look at, so we're gonna clean it up and move our negative exponent term to the denominator. This would be negative one over e. Okay, here's another problem. We're gonna plug in e for our x, and I get natural log of e cubed. Now there's two different properties of logs that help me simplify this. The one I'm gonna use is the power property that allows me to move the exponent to the front. And then I have three times the natural log of e, but the natural log of e is just one, so I get three. Problem L, if we substitute a zero in here, we end up with the square root of negative four. Now that's an imaginary number. It is not a number that I can find on a graph. It is not a finite y value. So in this instance, we would say that this limit does not exist, meaning there is not a finite y value that exists on the graph of this function as x approaches zero. Problem M, we substitute in our zero, I get zero minus nine over zero. Well, dividing by zero we know is undefined. That also would be the slope of a vertical line or an asymptote, which means there is not one y value that we are approaching on this graph. So again, if we see a number divided by zero, this limit does not exist. Okay, and problem N, we substitute in our negative three, and I get negative three squared minus three minus six over negative three plus three is nine minus three minus six over negative three plus three. And this results in zero over zero. This is a special case. This is called an indeterminate form, and it's going to be the topic of our next video. This limit may actually exist, but we're gonna have to do some manipulations to find out. So we don't know the answer to this problem yet, but we'll find that out in the next video.